So we recorded this video well during Africa Oil Week 2023. So while all the bosses are away sunning themselves in Cape Town and before they stay over for Africa Energy Week, which is also taking place in Cape Town, we thought we'd share a very interesting video with those who couldn't be there. So today we're going to be talking about Ghana and later on we're going to be telling you about a special offer that we have going up until the end of the year. So if we zoom in and uh, we can see here on this map here, it comes from map stand, and you can see here's the location of the Jubilee field. Now, worth mentioning, we did recently do a video talking all about the Belain field, and please uh, go and look on our channel and you'll see that. There'll be a link underneath here as well. So today, Jubilee. Now, here are some details of it. It was discovered, it was called Mahogany, the Mahogany One Well, and it was drilled by Cosmos back in July 2007. Now this was in the West Cape Three Points block, which is the block to the east, and you can see that's highlighted here. And then the well that was drilled by uh, Tullo in August 2007, uh, located here, is in the Deepwater Tenno block. Production started up in 2010. The water depth, well, it's deep, 1,100 metres, and the trap is a combined fault and stratigraphic pinch out. Now, the partners involved here are listed there in their equity shares, and, and this is as at uh, October 2023. Now, having a look at the stratigraphy, and here we can see Jubilee is uh, outlined here. It's actually reservoired down in these Chironian deep water sandstones here. They are uh, locally known as the upper and lower mahogany sandstones. So reference to the uh, discovery well there. But you can see that as we go round about the area, there are different sandstones at different horizons, but essentially lots and lots of source rock within this Cretaceous section. And uh, the seal for all of these it's the, are these sort of hemipelagic shales, both top seal and, in some cases, side and bottom seals. So looking a little more detailed, this is the Mahogany One log summary. On the left here, we have Gamma Ray, with the high gamma being the shales and the low gamma being the sandstones and the resistivity log here. Now, resistivity generally fairly uniform down through these gray shales. But what we can see here is that this high resistivity, this is hydrocarbon held within the, uh, the reservoir. So the reservoir consists of stacked turbidites. The discovery well encountered 95 meters of net pay and in total, the Jubilee field has over 350 foot hydrocarbon column in the upper mahogany sands and 400 meters column in the lower mahogany sands. So this is a very, very significant reservoir. It's a light, low viscosity oil, 37 API gravity. So here we feature the work of uh, Brian Cronin at uh, Tullow Oil, and uh, we use some of Brian's work in the Guyana Suriname video we recently put out. But here, looking at fields here, these fields are known as 10, uh, and I'm going to refer to them as 10 because I don't want to try and pronounce some of these names. They're a little bit beyond me. But uh, you can see three fields here, and uh, these are described as uh, being confined slope channel complexes, offset stacked lobes, and layered lobes in these regions. Now, going across, this is Jubilee we've been talking about today, and you can see that here multiple lobes separated by skinny channels. I like that. Um, here is the axis of Jubilee. You can see these really, really well-developed mahogany sands here. Very, very thick, you know, classic shape to uh, these sands. And likewise, the lower mahogany here, very, very thick units. Whereas looking up here in this uh, region of teak here, perhaps more sort of overbank, more sort of crevice splay type deposits. You know, we've, we've actually got thinner sands, but lots of them. And I'm sure this is a, an excellent reservoir to develop. So here we can see the seismic line over the Jubilee field. And on the right here, we can see that uh, there was indeed this RMS amplitude. Now, RMS uh, is where we the root mean squared of the amplitude. So, so what it would essentially do is, uh, if you were to map, say, this anomaly here, it would take the, the, the highest value of either the black or the yellow, the, the peak or the trough, and it would plot those. Now, I think... Um, it can mean different things and it can end up sort of plotting some very odd things. 
in some ways, these look like they're actually separated events. So, you know, what you might want to do is actually just try and find out the peak amplitude of the troughs and also one for the for the peaks and just see how they map out as well. But here we go. This is the anomaly. And you can see here, here's the Mahogany, the Discovery Well, an appraisal here. And then these are the wells over in the, uh, the block to the west. So this is how it was defined, how it was calibrated and how it was better understood. Now, I'm not entirely sure where we are on this line here, as I don't have any any indicators, but uh, we can see that there's some bright things, lots of pinching out as you come up the slope here. It looks like, is it this package in here? I'm not too sure. Somebody can put a note underneath. Is it the purple horizon? Mm, looks like it might be. Uh, anyway, there we go, the upper and lower mahogany reservoirs. Now in a sort of a geoseismic section, this is Jubilee here, so I've probably got it in the wrong place. Maybe I'm I'm drilling these Campanian wet sandstones, but ha, that's why I never got paid as a geophysicist. But you can see here that this is uh, this is the Jubilee field. So here's a strike line now, and the uh, location of the strike line approximately in this location here. So this is uh, this is the block boundary here. So Jubilee was unitized between these uh, these two blocks. So here are the various fields identified on the map here. You can see the 10 fields here, and then this is Jubilee, uh, this big one. And we go on over here as far as uh, the Odom, the Odom one. And you can see that they're all at sort of slightly different stratigraphic intervals. So there's been pulses of sands released into the basin area, and uh, some of these are accumulated. I think one of them, you know, this walnut, it's undrilled. Now, obviously, there'd be a concern here that can we actually fill walnut and then seal it? So you've got to go through a lot of these hemipelagic shales in the Campanian to, to actually charge walnut. Is it a worthwhile target? Maybe uh, get a farming partner to actually take that one on and take the risk. This is the FPSO. It's got uh, 120,000 barrels of oil per day capacity. It's got a gas production capacity of 160 million standard cubic feet of gas per day and a storage capacity of 1.6 million barrels of oil. So at that point, you would bring in a shuttle tanker, and you can see one is actually on station here, and then put a line across from the uh, the main FPSO across onto the shuttle tanker. Once it's full, it then goes off to port. You can see it, here's the swivel on the on the front end, and then this ship will actually weather vane around this turret here. So these are all the wells that are coming up and onto the ship. Here's the sort of carousel, taking it through into the uh, the separators. I'm not sure what these vessels are here. Perhaps some kind of secondary or tertiary separation, perhaps. And then here you've got your your big generators, and then not entirely sure what all this is. Probably gas compression. There's going to be your, your your, your firewall this is your uh, your blast wall and then accommodation and, and the helipad on the back of the ship fairly kind of typical design this is your flare tower going all the way up and off the top of the uh, the photograph the fbso is named after ghana's first president kwambi nagruma apologies sir if i've got your name mispronounced it won't be the first time nor the last Jubilee was discovered 50 years after he led the country to independence from Britain. Now, in the news, and this is from the very excellent Keyfax Energy, you can see uh, Tullo announces the startup of the Jubilee South East project. Now, I'll leave you, uh, pause the video if you want to read that. Here is Jubilee Southeast. It's uh, here's the main Jubilee field here, and Ju Jubilee Southeast is this region here. And the idea is to drill two producers and one water injector, with production starting up in July 2023. That was from the first two wells, and there are further two wells planned before the end of 2023. 
this is the impact it's going to have. And you can see this is the uh, actual production, first quarter 2023. This is just from Jubilee, Maine, but in Q3, Q4, we're going to get the addition of production from Jubilee Southeast Field, JSE. And you can see that that's actually going to take it back up. You know, capacity at 120,000, it's doing 115,000. So it looks like uh, everything's working pretty well there. So Greater Jubilee, you can see Jubilee has got a core, it's got uh, different sands here, going from uh, MH1, 3, 4, and 5. There's Jubilee Northeast, we've talked about Jubilee Southeast. Now together, there's nearly 2 billion barrels of oil initially in place. That's the stoic, the, the oil, stock tank oil initially in place. 2 billion barrels, of which about 40% of it is expected to be recovered. And here's a map down here showing you the relationship of uh, Jubilee, Jubilee Northeast and Southeast. So what next? Well, there are still lots of exciting developments to come. There's a planned development here on the uh, Pecan, to use the American pronunciation, or Pecan, to use the pronunciation where I come from. And uh, you can see that uh, this is going to be developed here, and this is an article from Energy Voice uh, Ed Reed, Hi, Ed. How are you doing? And you can see there's lots of other opportunities in the area. Now, not all of these have been uh, tied back and lots of potential uh, to actually tie these back in the future. Indeed, when we look at uh, Trove, our database, when we look at this region here, we have 60 unsanctioned discoveries. So they've already been proven. They've already been found in the region, and they range not just in uh, Ghana, but in Cote d'Ivoire, in Togo, in Benin, an estimated recoverable reserve of around about one and a half billion barrels of oil equivalent. Also, there are lots of exploration opportunities available. In addition to the 60 discovered but undeveloped finds that have been made to date in the region, there are 60 undrilled prospects, all of which are detailed within Trove. A total quoted unrisked resource of over 10 billion barrels of oil equivalent. There's a lot of potential in this region. Now, we've got an audit trail for all the data. Don't just blindly trust in a number in a table, which you get with many other data suppliers. In Trove, you'll be able to judge the validity for yourself. The special offer? Well, Trove Central West Africa. Now, this is our database for four countries, as well as Ghana, we've been talking about today. It's got Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, and Benin. Over 200 fields, discoveries, and prospects. Now, you can actually get all of that information, everything you see today, and a whole lot more for 5,500 US dollars. Get in touch. There's the address. The offer ends on the 31st of December, 2023. In summary, Jubilee continues to deliver a fantastic discovery and really kind of opened up this uh, entire transform margin. It's an exciting area with numerous unsanctioned discoveries and undrilled prospects. They're all in trove. You can find analogs all in trove. Useful if you're looking on transform margins across the other side of the Atlantic. And what about uh, other videos? What else would you like to see in this region? Leave a comment below. We'll see if we can get round to making a video on something else that's of interest. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. There's our information, uh, our web address and our email. Hope to see you back at our channel before too long. Bye for now.